guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here to do another where is video. This one is another couple. I've done one other missing couple in this series and I titled it where is Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron. That is linked below and I know that it's going to kill the grammar people that it says where is and then two names because obviously it should be where are but the name of my series is where is okay. That's why I started it as. Today we're going to be talking about a much younger missing couple who actually went missing not that long ago. This this is a relatively new case that I've been following and hoping there would be more information by now, honestly, but it's been a long time since anything like groundbreaking has come out. The couple that I'm going to be talking about today are Jonathan Reynoso and Audrey Moran. This is going to be one of those videos where you end up with a giant question mark at the end that you just can't figure out what you think happened. And it's really frustrating. There's a major lack of information, I feel, but I'm going to do um, my best with what we have. Although I do want to say that in cases where there's not a lot of information out, oftentimes people will post false information around or rumors and gossip get stirred up really quickly. And that definitely seems to be the case with this story. There's so much information out there. So unless something is really confirmed, I'm gonna try to stay away from reporting stuff like that. That's just, you know, in rumor land. Before we get started though, I wanted to let you guys know that we have just reached over $46,000 raised for Thorn through this Where Is series, which is absolutely incredible. Thorn is an organization that's working to end the human trafficking of children and child exploitation online. This is our newest t-shirt design. This was designed by Bria. She is so awesome, you guys. You have to follow her Instagram. She currently is living in Bali, but she travels all over the world, and her Instagram is one of my favorites. I absolutely adore her, and I asked her to make this design. So those shirts will be available for a limited amount of time, and then the Thorn shirts that I have on the website are also there, and all of the profit from the sales of these shirts goes right to Thorn. So let's go ahead and get into our video for today. Okay, so let's talk about this couple a little more. So we have Audrey Moran and Jonathan Reynoso. Audrey was a very sweet girl. She was 26 at the time that she went missing and she was actually pretty popular and got along really well with everyone. Her family said that she was super close with them, especially her sister and her younger niece. She was very, very pretty as you can tell. Gorgeous girl, very bubbly, had a really outgoing and fun personality. She was a religious person, not like super, super religious or anything, but she went to church and she was known as a pretty well behaved girl for the most part. Now, I will say there's not that much information on either of these two. It's pretty hard to find details about their personal life and verify that they're true at the same time. So I really can't say too much about who she was as a person or him either, to be honest. Jonathan was 28 at the time and his family described him as someone who was super fun to be around. Apparently he was really energetic and kind of the life of the party. He took time to really get to know people. He had a lot of genuine relationships. He definitely wasn't like the shy type. He was fun and really outgoing. So it seemed like the two of them had pretty similar personalities, which makes sense for why they were kind of dating, which I say kind of because I'm not exactly sure what their dating situation was and they can't speak for themselves. So I really want to be careful about what I say as far as their dating lives. Of course, with anyone, they could have secret things going on or things that aren't on social media that maybe they weren't even trying to keep secret, but I am not sure exactly where their relationship was at. Her Facebook says single, although a lot of people's Facebooks say single. I haven't updated my Facebook in like probably four years. I don't even know if it says married on my Facebook, to be honest. So not everyone is like constantly checking their Facebook relationship status and like making sure it's up to date, you know? So that doesn't really say anything. A lot of people seem to think they had a pretty good thing going on that they were really dating. But then there's other people, there's rumors really that say that she had another guy in her life, but this guy's never been released. No one knows who he is. I'm not even sure if it's true. So he worked at the Desert Regional Medical Center, but before he disappeared, Jonathan was having some issues at work and with his finances. There's not too many details about why, but his family thinks that he he may have been fired from his job and didn't tell them. They think that he was like embarrassed and that's why he didn't say anything. I'm not sure if they ever found out if he was fired or if he quit or if he was still employed at the time. There wasn't any information on that. And then he also owed a few backed up months of rent to his apartment complex, like $2,000. So, I mean, that's a decent amount when your rent's like on the lower side. So it was May 10th, 2017. At this point, we believe that they were kind of dating, but it wasn't anything serious. It was pretty fresh, whatever it was, whether it was even exclusive or not. They were both living in Palm Desert in the Coachella Valley and they lived separately. He lived in his own apartment 
apartment and I believe she lived with her mom. So like I was saying earlier, this case is very confusing. There's a lot of rumors because there's a major lack of information. I think the police have a bunch of stuff that they have not shared yet. It would be the only thing that makes sense. There's just so many pieces of this that I just am so confused about and it leaves me feeling like I have no way to even explain to you guys some of this. But I do think that that is because they're hanging on to text messages and possible pieces of evidence, more information. I think there's definitely a really strong investigation going on and they're just really in the early stages of it still. So the day that they went missing is just super, super confusing. And that day, for some reason, Jonathan was supposed to be in this town called Brawley and I don't know how they know that he was going to be there. I don't know if he told Audrey, I don't know if he told his parents, but they do believe that he was supposed to be in Brawley on this day and that Audrey was supposed to be picking him up. I'm guessing there were text messages that are not released confirming this. There has to be because otherwise this makes no sense. But anyway, he was going to Brawley to hang out with this group of friends. Now this is really sketchy because this group of friends was not actually known by his real group of friends. You know how everyone's got like their circle, they got their close group of friends. Okay, so this group in Brawley was not that group. And the actual group of friends, his true friends, were like, we have no idea who those people are or why he would be in Brawley. So that's very concerning. And I don't know how they actually confirmed that this was the plan. Again, I think there's some things missing here, but the plan was for her to be picking him up in Brawley that night, taking him back to his apartment, and then I guess just going home from there. So at 5 45 p.m a pizza was actually ordered to his apartment and this was weird because he was still over an hour and a half away in Brawley when the pizza was ordered now obviously it does take some time for a pizza to be delivered but it doesn't take an hour and a half it's not like lining it up so that it's hot and fresh when you get home that just makes no sense so was he at his apartment actually or was he in Brawley was someone else at the apartment he did have a roommate but the roommate was not there they were able to prove that he wasn't there when that pizza was ordered and when they actually looked at the receipt it was ordered by Jonathan so there's a lot of question why would he order this pizza why was he in Brawley that is what nobody understands no one knows why he was there and what's even weirder is he didn't have a car he was having financial issues at the time he was in debt he was struggling it was not a good year for him so it was weird for him to just be in this other town for whatever reason so meanwhile Audrey was still finishing up her work day she actually worked until 8 p.m. that night and then she went to her sister's house for a little bit hung out for you know a little while and then she went to go pick up Jonathan and Brawley so between 8 50 and 9 ish her mom started getting worried about her she wanted to make sure she had safely made it to Brawley so she texted her and asked her where she was and Audrey responded to her with this picture now I'm not sure why she would send this picture I think there's a couple of possibilities there's a possibility that it wasn't even her that someone sent this photo to make it look like she was okay having a good time alive and well type of thing she could have also been sending the photo to let her mom know what this guy looks like maybe she was in a bad situation with him maybe things weren't going well with Jonathan I hate to even think that I mean chances are he's a victim as well and I never want to assume that but you definitely kind of have to think about it maybe she sent it so her mom would know what he looked like or she could have just sent it because she wanted her mom to be like oh I'm I'm good it was her way of saying she's fine which I've totally done my mom's texted me before and I've just sent her a picture of me and Josh back like I have done that so that does seem plausible her mom got the picture figured everything was fine and that she was having fun didn't worry about it after that and they did actually confirm that that picture was taken the night before so that is not like you know what they were wearing that night so Jonathan had a close group of friends and they had like a group chat on Instagram where they would send each other funny shit and laugh and you know, the stuff that you do in a group chat, I'm sure a lot of you are in a group chat. But at 9.05, a message came into their group chat from Jonathan and it said, I'm dying right now. Now, all the messages before this were referring to like a meme. Like they were all joking, saying, you know, laughing my ass off, stuff like that. And then he said that. So it's really, really tricky because it could be something really bad. I mean, he could have actually been texting them in his final moments, or it could have meant like, I'm dying of laughter right now, which people say all the 
the time. So it's very hard to determine what that message actually was. So that was the last that anyone heard from Jonathan. No one heard anything else from Audrey. So the next morning, both of their parents jumped on filing missing persons reports. Her parents filed at 9 a.m., his parents filed at 12 p.m. So obviously your first thought is, you know, maybe they were doing something fun together that weekend or something and they kind of went away to spend some time together and forgot about family or I don't know, something along those lines. Well, they both did have plans for that upcoming weekend. Audrey had plans with her friends and she had to work and Jonathan had plans to go to a concert. The following day, however, on May 12th, police were able to track down Audrey's car and it was on the side of the road off the I-10 highway in Beaumont, California. Beaumont is about 45 minutes away from Palm Desert in the opposite direction of the direction to Brawley. So basically she had no reason in the world to be up there, especially if she was going to be going downwards to get Jonathan. Once the car was inspected, there was no red flags or any clues to help figure out what happened. There were absolutely no signs of forced entry. I mean, this car was completely fine, completely clean. The only thing that was weird was the back window was rolled down a little bit. What about uh, the investigation that was to follow? You were towing the car back, I think, to here. Or we you, were. Uh, has that been completed? Yes. Anything? Nothing. Happened? So no forced entry on the vehicle. No signs of a struggle inside the vehicle. Uh, no blood or anything like that. Investigators say fingerprints found inside have been sent out to a lab. No word on when they'll come back or what insight they may provide. One thing to keep in mind though is it had been two days already since they had heard from Audrey and Jonathan. So we don't know if that was actually their last spot that they were or if they left the car there or if it was placed there afterwards. So their cell phones have never been found and that might be the reason why police haven't released any text messages. I'm assuming that they would still have a way to access their text messages. Maybe not. Maybe they really don't have any access to that, which would be a shame. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in most cases, unless they're using like a burner phone or something like that, you can pull text messages that people were having from days before, at least for one of them. That seems really weird. So I, I feel like that information is just being kept. But like I said, their cell phones were never found, but they did determine that their phones last pinged in the Coachella Valley area. They probably turned off or died that night, one of the two, the night that they went missing. On May 18th, missing persons flyers were sent out. These are the flyers. I'm going to leave them up on the screen for a little bit and their parents spoke out about how devastating this was. Parents of the missing woman are speaking out for the first time. Baby, we miss you and we're still waiting for you. Sorry. Please, baby, if you're seeing us, we just want you to know that we're be waiting and we love you. The reason this is so intriguing and, and why we're taking such a high priority on it is it's so out of character for both her and him to be completely off the grid. So not contacting family, not contacting their social media contacts. Um, so we're, we're, that's why we're treating this um, with such vigor. And then on May 25th, the families held a joint candlelight vigil for Audrey and Jonathan. So by the time June rolled around, they still had not heard from them. There were no solid leads as far as they're telling everyone. So eventually they put out a $10,000 reward for anyone that can help find them or knows any information that would lead to finding them. And then 15 days later, this strange account pops up on the internet. I mean, not super strange or anything. The account was literally just called Aaron. They were going around and leaving comments on various websites saying that he knew where they were and that patience is a virtue. Her friends and family say that there was a guy named Aaron in her life, but he wasn't like anyone she was dating. As far as they knew, he was just a friend. So they don't believe that there was any type of connection. And the family ran a bunch of different fundraisers. Of course, I will link their fundraising efforts below. They did all types of things such as bracelets, Christmas ornament, a GoFundMe page. Let's talk about the possibility of there being another guy. You know, oftentimes with a case like this where there's a missing couple, you think maybe there was an ex involved. Who would want both of these people possibly dead? Not saying that they are. I actually don't fully believe that they are at all. But I'm just saying who would want to take out both of them? Possibly some type of person who is still in love with Audrey and is jealous of Jonathan. That definitely seems possible. Or the other way around. It could have been a girl. Very doubtful. In fact, I think it was probably more than one person. Don't you think? I think 
Hey, settle down. I'm trying to think hard right now. I got my thinking cap on. Jeez, my cat's trying to like break out of here. But I think to kidnap two people, especially two adults, and Jonathan is a big dude, okay? I think you would need at least two people to get the job done. So I think there was more than one person here involved. But obviously you think X. That's obviously who you're gonna go to. So who is this other guy that is possibly in her life? So police did say that there was some type of mystery man in her life. They have not released his name though, but they did do a search of his house, which is pretty big. So this guy lived in Coachella Valley and the police did obtain search warrants. They went in and searched his house and there have been reports that when police were leaving the house, they were leaving with like trash bags full of evidence, but no one knows what it was. There have been multiple people trying to obtain those search warrants. There have been, you know, media trying to get a hold of what they found, but the police have not released anything, which makes me think there might be something solid, which is good. That's good. Let's hope so. I'm definitely going to keep my eye on this case. All of you should too, because I think hopefully more will come out. Now, another thing that was interesting about this guy in the Coachella Valley is his neighbor said that he would throw like a ton of parties at this house and it was really loud all the time. It was really annoying, obnoxious. But then the night that they went missing, they just stopped and they never had another party there since. So that's really strange. And then in addition to this, the guy that lived in that house ended up saying that he didn't know where his car was and police ended up finding out that he burned his car to the ground, which definitely is weird, right? Okay, so I think that's red flag. That's what's going on here. That's It seems like this person, mystery guy, is involved and police are probably holding back a lot of information because they're building a case. So there's all types of theories. We don't know if someone was acting as Jonathan and somehow lured Audrey down to the Brawley area. We're not sure what happened at all. There are so many question marks here. Maybe they were abducted together at some point and forced to drive up north and then a in their car and switch into a different car, something like that. There's a lot of rumors around the fact that maybe the two of them could have been involved in the drug trade. Maybe they were involved with the wrong people, maybe the cartel even. I mean, we don't know. I think that's definitely a possibility. This is so sketchy. It sounds like something sketchy like that. There's obviously a huge chance that it's this guy that Audrey was involved in this mystery man. But what would he have done with Jonathan? I mean, he must have been seriously jealous. I think it would be very strange for him to be that jealous to kill Jonathan when it's not like they were even fully dating yet. Like that seems like a bit of a stretch. I think if anything, maybe she got involved in the wrong person. For some reason, I just keep going back to human trafficking. I know so much about it that so many of these cases, I think the unsolved ones, are human trafficking. This one really seems like it to me. I think just the way that this all went down and how they just disappeared like this sounds like something possibly professional. It would take a lot to cleanly abduct two people. It sounds like something that a group could have done, a group that's done things like this before, you know what I mean? I have no idea. I just hope that more information comes out from the police because right now it just feels like we really have no idea. If you do see them, please call the special tip line at 760-393-3554 or the Palm Desert Sheriff Station at 760-863-1600. If they are in human trafficking, there's a very good chance that they're both still alive. I mean, they totally could be. No one really has any idea. I think maybe I'm jumping to human trafficking a lot because there's a lack of information. I think maybe if I knew more from the police about this other mystery, mystery guy, then maybe I wouldn't lean more that way. But right now that's what it looks like. I wish we knew more about what was in those bags of evidence. I mean, it could have been nothing. Bags of evidence can be just clothing that they were bringing out to test. It doesn't mean it's, you know, bags full of guilty evidence. We don't necessarily know what they found. This one is just so strange and I just find it bizarre when couples go missing together. I mean, don't you think it's weird? Think about how hard it would be to abduct two people at once, unless they left together, which is always a possibility. I mean, people always throw that out there that maybe they left and started a new life. They live on an island together. Obviously it's nicer in our heads to think that maybe they're like living on a tropical island together. That's probably not the case. I highly, highly doubt that. It is a possibility though. Not that they're on an island, but that they are 
you know, somewhere together. I really wanna know what you guys think about this case. This one was super interesting to me. Definitely check out those Thorn shirts below. Thorn is working against human trafficking. It's such an incredible place to put some of your money. So if you wanna check it out, there'll be links below to that. I hope so badly that these two families get answers. They're both, as far as what I've read, just devastated over this. They were both extremely close with their families. So this has just been terrible for everyone. I mean, it always is when someone goes missing, of course. This is really tugged on my heartstrings to see two young, promising people just go missing like that. But that's it for me today, guys. Be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, if that even works. And that's it for me today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye. Where'd you go? Seems like it's been forever. Where'd you go? I miss you so. Seems like it's been forever that you've been gone. Where'd you go?